Hey lads, this is an emergency announcement before the video starts. Basically, remember to use code Octo when you buy KR from the KR store. Anyways, that's it. Let the video begin. Hey guys, my name is Octo and welcome to episode 15 of Crunker Map Making Tips and Tricks. In this episode, I'm going to be going over how to use decals, which are basically just, you know, textures with transparency and stuff for use in your Crunker maps. In this example here, you can see I'm using a floor decal on top of this whatever road texture, which is like some arrows or whatever. It's just sort of cool. A B sign showing that this is site B or whatever, a random 22 for aesthetic details. A door, this, like, and the great thing about all these decals, right, is that they are super easy on your system, like they're great because they're really optimized, especially if you only turn one face on, which is what you should be doing. They're really easy to make because they don't require 3D modeling skills, only 2D. And they're like super easy to import and just place around your map to add detail where, you know, usually there wouldn't be any. And of course, obviously I'm also using some custom textures here to further amplify it. And these are actually taken from uh, a map I'm working on right now, 7Fi. Anyways, there'll be more on that in the future, but let's get into the general gist of how you make these. So here we are in the editor, and basically what you can see is that we've got these, you know, objects, right, which have just got one face turned on and a custom texture loaded. And that's basically just how these textures work. This one looks like it has a white background, but force transparency is turned on, and as you can see, so is stretch. That basically allows us to more, you know, appropriately control the size of these decals. Anyways, let's see how we actually make them in free editing software, Photo here. Alright, so once you're into photo here, what you're basically gonna, gonna do is make up, you know, your decal. So in this case, I've just got a nice, you know, super basic, you know, thing lined up here. This is just a little road marker that I've prepared earlier. So sometimes you might have issues when you import it into the game, so I'd just recommend rasterizing everything, and if you really want to, just merging everything together and aligning it in the center of your image here. So this, of course, should be under 256 by 256 pixels for it to be, you know, well optimized and crunker. After that, you're just going to want to export it as a PNG. That is the most important part, and making sure it has a transparent background. Then, head back into the Crunker Editor to upload it. Alright, so now we're back in the Crunker Editor, what you're going to want to go and do is go File, and Publish Asset. And then you want to go Texture, and then Private, ideally. Then select your texture. So here, we're going to select Road Marker, that I've made before. And then Road Marker, ignore Windows freaking out. And then you're going to want to give it a name. So I'm going to call it Road Marker 2. And now you're just going to want to take your flat plane, which is you know, got only the top surface or the surface you're using applied to it. I've already got one here, but I'm sure at this point you guys should know how to import a cube and just you know, turn off its faces. If you really want to know, if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can choose which faces to render. Or you can go into face rendering mode by clicking M. Anyway, we're going to duplicate this using Shift R, and we're just going to move it over somewhere random. Let's just move it forwards a little bit. And now let's select our new texture. So go over to texture, which is, by the way, under style. So you just open up style, and then texture. And then you decide which texture you use. So we're going to go select custom, and then we're going to use road marker 2 here. And that should load in, and now we've got a nice road marker that points us to the left. And as you can see, we've got stretch and force transparency on. This is just so that it aligns properly with the texture, and the transparency is obviously so the transparency works. Let's give it a quick test. So now that we're in here, we can see that the texture looks, you know, nice and dandy. And by the way, guys, what I said about in the uh, in the photo editor, photo peer, is really important. If you don't actually properly export your, you know, uh, file, you'll end up with something that probably the colors are broken, or the shape's broken, or a whole manner of things. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. It's a pretty cool one, and I'm really loving using decals and stuff in my newer maps. It's, like, really fun. All the ones I have in work, I basically use it. Well, the, the main one I haven't worked on anyway. Uh, and uh, it's a really helpful tip. I hope you guys use this. And uh, remember to use code Octo, because I have a code now. And uh, basically, I'm super close.